welcome to part eight of my building the Flying Dutchman. Well, this isn't the Flying Dutchman, but it is the little lifeboat. Actually, I have a little bit more underway. You can see I've started some of the planking. And remember, I was gonna use trunnels and I had ordered that trunnel kit. Well, as you'll find out, that didn't work out as well as I had hoped. I recovered well from my cataract surgery. It's kind of amazing. You don't know what you don't have until you get it back and colors are brighter. Up close, vision is better, so that'll be good when I'm uh, doing some of the modeling things. So I, I'm very much appreciative for that and the technology that's available. I'm gonna be doing a little bit of traveling over the next few weeks. I'll get a little bit more done on the boat, but it may be three or four weeks before you see me again. So let me take you on this journey for party. Because I'm waiting for that trunnel kit to arrive so I can use it to do the planking, I'm skipping ahead and I'm going to assemble the lifeboat and I've set it out in numerical sequence. So hopefully that'll make it easier to assemble. This is an interesting little feature. It's, uh, they've made this frame and the front and the back are a little longer than all the rest. And then you take this and it kind of fits in place and it'll hold everything firm when you go to put the planks on. So I kind of like that idea. There's a little mark you can see it right here and that's where the first plank goes then these will get cut off flush there i'm also going to use some wood that i have that is uh it's either oak or walnut i don't remember but i'm going to use that on the lifeboat it's the same size as what came with the ship i'm just going to use a little better quality wood I'm to the point where I'm going to fill this in and how I do it is, see this piece will fit right in there perfectly. Now I need to trim this end. The upper edge is pretty much straight. So wherever this lower one starts to intersect with the one under, which is right about, oops, right about here, I'll put a little mark and it goes all the way to the tip. So then I need to kind of make this angle from this point to the tip. And I do that with my little miniature belt sander and I just go about it slowly. Let's see how that fits. That's about perfect. Now the back end, I'm going to have to do the same thing. Sometimes I will take a straight edge and try and give myself a line all the way. Pretty good. Here it is in place. Need to give it a minute or two just for the super glue to harden. And then I can move on to the next piece. And I'll show you the finished product in the next scene. I did some modifications on the lifeboat. I didn't put as many of these cross seats in here. And this it shows a picture of, doesn't really say how to do it. And there is a little indentation in this steering uh, rod and then you just drill the hole the rest way through it. I made this little steer stick and I'll put a bend in it later. I'll you get uh, a soldering iron and heat it up and bend that just a little bit. Then to darken it, I used flame. So I just took a butane lighter and a little bit of a butane torch very quickly, just uh, singed it to give that aged look. I'm ready to start preparing for planking. 
when, once you insert these pieces, that gives you a guide as far as what your taper should be. So I've already filed this one down and you can see there's a, an amount that'll have to be removed from these. I use a file, they show a sanding block. I just use a large metal file for this. After you file all this and put all these decks in place, they come up and they say to put I6 in place. That's going through the lower deck and then it cuts off, I think, right where it enters the uh, top deck. The problem is I've already assembled a lot of stuff and that was tough to get in. So here it is and I've had to tap it in with a hammer at an angle. I'm gonna be able to get it in, but that's a little frustrating. That should have been put in a long time ago. You can see it deep inside there. I used oak, I had an oak dowel that was the same size that was required. I had to cut it off a little short, um, but I think it just sticks down here in the lower deck, so I don't think that'll be noticeable once I get everything in place. But why they waited clear till now to have me insert that, I have no idea. Again, here it is in the instructions, and it shows you inserting it, and then it shows the picture of it slightly recessed right there. So if anybody knows, let me know. Something I found notable on these instructions, for example, this area right here, where you're putting in these walnut supports, it shows it here, shows the distance, but it doesn't anywhere imply that you do it on both sides. Now, logic would tell you that, but in, in any of the ships I've built in the past, it gives you both sets of steps. Here it just shows it on one side, but when you go to your parts list of J1, as an example, here's J1, there are 12 of them, and that's the size, and the walnut, but if you notice over here, there's just six, so that implies on the opposite side of the ship is the position of the other six. Something small, but notable. Because those supports are walnut, I always use tongue oil instead of a stain. So I've done a coating and I'm letting it dry. That will seal the wood and the opposite side I have in place and they're drying. Actually, it's dry enough. I can probably pull one away. So that's the appearance of walnut with just the tongue oil on it. If you recall in the last episode, I said I was delaying doing the planking on the sides of the ship because I was waiting for this treadle kit to arrive. And even though it was half price, I don't think I would waste my money. And I normally do like uh, model shipways, materials and things. This is all that it showed. And I knew that I was just trying to make these little wooden pegs. But when you receive it, you get one piece of paper with instructions, which are not really, in my opinion, that much of instructions. You get a very small packet of, where did they go? Here we are. Of tiny drill bits, which I have plenty of tiny drill bits. You get the reducer, and this is also made to um, thin out wire, supposedly. So you pull from this side to make wire go thinner, and this side to make dowels smaller. Let me tell you, it is like impossible. You also get a little bag of bamboo toothpicks, and that's it. I tried pulling this to these toothpastes through, starting at the size that it just barely fits in, work my way down. There is no way. It, it really does not functionally work. So I've decided I'll just have to use the nails. I still would like to use um, the wood to connect planks with. I think it would have a neat appearance. But for this ship, I'm going to forego that and try again in the future. This would be a do not bother purchase, in my opinion. 
I've begun planking. You can see I used the nails on this. That's what the instructions show. I've not used nails before, but it has helped hold them in place. I've had success in pre-bending the whole planks. Don't have to get them exact because you can kind of work with them after they're in place. One thing I will mention that I do, because I'm not a professional plank applier, to say the least. But as you start reaching a curved area, and it's going to be hard for me to explain, but as these turn, those two lower corners hit each other and it'll create a gap. If you sand away that inside edge, which does not show anyway, on both sides, then when you come up to a curve, those outside edges will match up. I at one time purchased a small wooden tool to try and do that. It's not very effective. I have it laying around here. If I could see it, I'd show it to you. What has been working best for me is this small belt sander and I just lightly take off the corners. Turn it around, now do the other side. Now you can see how I knock those corners off and you can do it more or less. It just takes uh, practice and you can get a feel for what works best for you. Works well for me. I normally have my little shop vac turned on so it sucks the dust away instead of getting it all over everything. Another thing that I'm trying on this particular model is setting these planks where they go and then putting a dot where the nail is going to be and I take this over to my drill press and pre-drill the nail holes. Then it holds it right in place and I can drive it into the the bulkheads. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you wonder why I use the drill press for this, it's these drill bits are so fragile if I use a hand drill over on the ship I break them off all the time. I've been using these clamps and not the pads, there's a little hook there, or a little edge or corner, and I can pull this plank up and then kind of push it in manually. And I've been working my way from the center outwards. And I know there's a little push tool that you can get. I ordered one and it's, it's for larger, apparently larger ships than this. So I'm just using this miniature hammer. Eventually these won't work because it'll get too wide, but so far it's working fine. The downside of using this, these little brass nails, if I have a little wave, which you can slightly see, I think that there's a little unevenness. unevenness. I'm not gonna be able to sand that without sanding the, the heads of the nails off. So if I could have used the wooden pegs, that would have worked nice, and then I could sand it and get it smooth. Because this is a pretty rough ship, it's going to be okay if there's imperfections in it. I've got to start on the planking, and I made a couple of decisions on my own. This lower section actually had the uh, side planking cut out sooner. I'm hiding some of my wiring by dropping it down one more, and then I'll leave this part open, and obviously I'll bring this up to about here just so that you cannot see those wires down there. That concludes part eight of my building the Flying Dutchman. I'll be back in a few weeks. Stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching.